So hello everyone, good evening. It's nice to be here together. Uh, tonight, we're gonna to be talking about Jewish dating secrets. And before we get started, what I've asked you all to put in the chat is what is your Jewish dating secret? If I ask you, what is your Jewish dating secret? What is your one secret that you've learned over your lifetime, over your years, or over, I don't know how long you've been dating, but what is your secret um, that you would want to share? And I would love to be able to say that out. So I, I someone just uh, wrote me privately, have patience. Someone else uh, said to keep at it and be confident. Someone else said men and women can't be friends. Uh, someone else just said, um, just go out for a coffee and chill. Someone else said, fantastic, you can't force the situation. These are some great secrets because you yourself have so much knowledge. And I think it's important for you to be able to share and you can continue using the chat box here. Oh, someone else just said communication and trust is the key to happiness. Happy wife, happy life. Okay, someone else says my secret, no cliches. Love that. Something I re learned recently somebody else says is to date with a purpose. Oh. Yes, we're going to talk about that perhaps a little later. Dating with a purpose. This is fantastic. Okay. Continue writing your dating secrets, and I am going to take a look at this um, and make sure that we can get everything taken care of for you. So before we get started, I want to thank everyone who donated tonight. Uh, those of you who did donate tonight, the money collected from this class is going to help a Ukrainian orphan. There's a young woman who just left Ukraine and we've been helping her. Um, and she is actually in the process of getting married. And so the money is going to help her. Now, tonight, since most of us are single and you never know, the magic is in the air. So what I want you to do is next to your name, if you can, put an A or an NA. A means available, NA means not available. And also, if you can put the age range of the person you're looking for, and maybe a religious orientation or orientation of the person that you're looking for. Or you can even write, I see somebody here wrote um, the, the city that they're in. So that also helps for for people to know uh, where, where you're coming in from and where you're, the possibility. And I'm asking you, obviously, if someone puts an A next to their name, which means they're interested, which means that you can um, contact them if you want. What's most important tonight is to be courteous, be nice. You know, even if someone allows you, make sure to be respectful. I'll also make a mention here before I get started, that if you haven't made a profile on any of our sites, please do so. J Montreal is our parent site. Now, you don't have to be from Montreal to sign up to J Montreal uh, because we have a network of sites that are all interconnected on the back end. And you can just go to jmontreal.com. You can use marketing code Rabbi's Gift, and it's free. We have about 35,000 profiles on there. For those of you who are in Toronto, somebody mentioned this before, there's jtoronto.com. And for those of you who are outside of North America, you can go to jmatchmaking.com. They're all interconnected in the back end. So there's nothing to worry about. It's all part of the same network. And um, I will just put this in the chat uh, for those of you who definitely haven't made a profile. I encourage you, even while I'm talking tonight, just go make a profile, use Marketing Code Rabbi's Gift. You get a nice gold membership for free. Also, throughout the class, you're welcome to private chat me your questions. Just continue sending me questions privately. And I'm going to obviously put a preferential on the questions right after I'm finished speaking to those who sent me before, uh, before tonight. And, and then I will start with the questions that I got tonight and hopefully we'll be able to get through lots of your questions tonight. Now, in preparing tonight's class, what I want the next, I would say half an hour of our time together 
to be is a real conversation. I've been thinking quite a bit about what we're doing and how we're doing it. And I don't expect that you're going to find out or you're going to learn something tonight that you don't know already. I'm probably, over the course of this evening, just going to remind you of so many things that you know already that you probably forgot, or maybe you didn't forget. Also, um, if you came tonight because you want to feel good about being single, then I don't recommend that you stay. If you're looking for therapy here tonight, I don't think this is a good place for you either. If you're looking to validate what you're doing or say what you are already know, maybe you may end up validating what you're doing. That's possible. But what I would like to warn you, especially, is that I'm probably going to offend you tonight. There's going to be quite a few things that you probably won't agree with me tonight. And that's okay. We don't have to agree. My little nugget that I'm going to give you just to start off tonight is the definition of emotional maturity. The definition of emotional maturity is the ability to hold two ideas within you at the same time. And they could be opposing ideas. But the ability to hold two opposing ideas within you means that you're emotionally mature. So there's so many things that are all around us. And what happens is so often when we're talking, when we're in a conversation, we're thinking about what we're going to say next instead of listening. One of the greatest secrets that I can teach you when it comes to relationships is the power of listening and the joy of listening. If you don't get joy, if you're annoyed by listening, that's a very, very difficult thing to change. But I would say if that's the one thing that you change in your life is to enjoy to get pleasure from listening to someone else, especially listening to a date, especially listening to someone you're in a relationship with. Which means if you're talking to someone and you're having a conversation and you're just waiting for the person to finish what they're saying so you can get a word in, that's not a conversation. That's two people talking at each other. When the person is finished talking, what your natural response should be is say more, say more. I want to hear more. And even if they went on a dialogue and uh, a monologue for the past 25 minutes, I want to hear more. The joy of listening. Just think about that for a moment. The joy of listening. Can you handle that? Can you handle the ability just to sit here? I know you probably have a bunch of different screens open in front of you. I know you're probably multitasking because that's what we do. So you have really a little bit of your attention here and a little bit of your attention there. But the truth is that we can only have our attention on one thing at a time. That's it. So if you're multitasking, it means that you're sharing your attention between many things. But at any given time, you're only going to have one thing you can be doing. So if you came here tonight to meet someone, Great, that's no problem. I'm going to be talking in the background for you. And you probably won't be listening, and that's fine. But if you came here to listen, that power of listening is such a, a, such a, a beautiful, beautiful experience. So what I want to start off with is the ability to know that you are the common denominator in all of your failed relationships. The first and most important thing that you can say to yourself tonight is it's my fault. Yes, there was someone else in the relationship, but it's my fault. Because that circumstance happened because of the choice that I made. So tonight, don't blame your past relationships. Don't blame your childhood. Wherever you are, 
Whatever you're doing, it's no one else's fault but your own. So take control of it. Jewish dating secret number one. I'm going to present 10 secrets tonight. It's going to take me about 20 minutes or 25 minutes. Afterwards, I'm going to start answering questions. I will start with the questions that came either before tonight's class or during tonight's class. And then at some point, I'm hoping the following half hour that we'll be able to have a, a conversation. So please use the chat box, whether you're going to talk about whether or not you're available or you're going to ask questions, you can just press on my name on the chat box and you can send me an anonymous uh, private message, which I will ask anonymously on your behalf. So let's start off with my 10 dating secrets for tonight. My first secret is dating for the right reasons or dating for the wrong reasons. What is your intention? Why are you dating? What's the point of dating? Do you have a purpose in dating? Or is it just, well, because I don't know, I have nothing else better to do. I'll tell you why it's so important. Because dating is the opposite of marriage. People who are into dating will never get married. If you're really into dating, you're never going to get married. And if you do, you'll probably get divorced. Because if you're too comfortable with the process of dating, you end up, when you're in a relationship, you end up really confused. Now, I know there was another world, and it wasn't so long ago. But not long ago, people would date for permanence. They would date for commitment. They would date for love. Today, we date for recreation. Going on a date is supposed to be entertaining. It's supposed to be a, a time to forget about life, to, to have a good time. But what are the ramifications of what is effectively a 10-year job interview or maybe a 30 or 40 or 50 or 60-year job interview? Can, can people cordon off their 20s and be evaluated by another person and still emerge whole, still emerge unscarred. I think it's so important not to take ourselves too seriously. Just be. You don't have to put on a show. You don't have to put on a, a version of yourself that you're probably not going to be able to keep up with. If you start off fictitiously, you're going to continue the same way, and then you're going to be shocked why it's going to end as fast as it started. Dating should be a educated yet pleasurable experience. You have to go out. You have to have fun. Shared experiences are so important in the dating process. But I'll tell you that the harder you try to succeed at dating, the more you are probably going to fail. The less you try to impress your date, the more you eventually will. You just have to let go. You have to be yourself and allow the full vibrancy of your human personality to manifest. And I'll add to this, that there's nothing more off-putting than arrogance. According to a number of studies, the most attractive thing about a person or about a man to a woman is a sense of humor. Um, and the second, I believe, is um, filthy rich. So unless you're rich, then you better get good at being having a sense of humor. Otherwise, you're in trouble. No, that doesn't sound very good. But what does sound good is knowing that you could be yourself and the full vibrancy of your human potential, of your personality, of who you are, can come out, and that's very valuable. So, ask yourself, why am I dating? And am I dating with a purpose? Or am I dating 
Because how you go into it is how you're going to come out of it. So if you go out, if you go into it without a purpose, you will probably have a very similar experience while you're in the dating process. Dating secret number two. Self-confidence is more important than looks. Being a matchmaker, I don't like being, calling myself a matchmaker, being someone who, who, who introduces people to one another, being a relationships coach, it's given me a lot of opportunity to observe what I would call the modern dating scene. I may be a rabbi with a beard, but I've lived and watched hundreds of couples and singles. And what I've witnessed is an unbelievable lack of confidence. So many people today have no belief in themselves. They don't believe that they're worth anything. And this causes all types of confusion, heartache, a search for love. You're okay. You're a good person. Just the fact that so many people find it impossible to muster up the courage to simply introduce themselves and talk normally. I mean, I heard someone recently say something absolutely ridiculous. I, I was at an event and I heard someone say, I hope you know CPR because you take my breath away. Really? Really? Is this what it's come to? Am I missing something here? I think we've come a long way with all these bells and whistles. Say smart things. Wear, we, we, we wear the right clothes. We have awesome jobs. Maybe we own a COVID pet in order for someone to be interested in us. But I think that the most attractive quality to a potential partner is self-confidence. And what does self-confidence mean? It sounds like a very big word. It's a word that so often is not, is not uh, uh, translated or not defined. Tr self-confidence is that when we start to feel good about the direction of our lives, not because we have a beautiful face, not because of a bulging bank account, not because of all the externalities, but simply quietly confident in our ability to contribute something positive to life. There's a beautiful story about a man who was distraught and he came to Rabbi Schneer Zalman of Liadi, the Alter Rebbe. And he started going over his woes. And after a few minutes, the Rebbe turned to this man so eloquently and says, you tell me what you need, but you don't tell me what you're needed for. Every single morning, when you wake up, ask yourself a simple question. What am I needed for today? And it could be that today I am needed to go to work to do whatever it is that I'm doing. And that's fine. It's not an existential question. Today, what am I needed for? Right now, if you ask yourself, what am I needed for here? I am needed to be able to listen and reflect and see if any of the things that this rabbi is saying could help me in my dating process. That's okay, it's not existential. It's just asking yourself and being confident, saying this is what I'm needed for right here. I am here right now because I chose to be here. There's so many people who knew about this event tonight, but didn't choose to be here for whatever reason. But you chose to be here right now. So the fact that you chose to be here that is what you're needed for right now. If you don't actively make a choice, you'll be passively making a choice. So what I encourage you to do is actively make the choice. That is self-confidence. 
It's the ability to say, I'm here, present. As Avram said to God, Hineni, I'm here, present and accounted for. That's it. It's not a, a deep philosophical discussion that often it becomes. It's just Hineni, here I am. What else do you want to know? So self-confidence is just the ability to ask yourself, what am I needed for at any given time and being, being able to answer that? Again, not existential, just simply, what am I needed for right now? If you ask what I need, well, you can might as well get married to yourself because no one will be able to fulfill your personal needs the way you can. And I know some of you have the question, yes, people have tried it already. People have tried to marry themselves. I forgot what it's called. There's a term for it. You, you, you can look it up. So if you want to get married to yourself, you and your alter ego, you and your avatar, go for it. Party on. Just don't clog up the system. Dating secret number three. You are looking for a soulmate and not a partner. So few people today date in order to find their soulmate. Instead, they search for a partner. And I think this is a fundamental confusion of priorities. These people who are searching for a partner, they want to find a person who's going to provide them with many superficial things. Thank you, Maurice. Sologamy, that's right, that's what it's called. Dating, getting married to yourself is called sologamy. For those of you who need to get married to yourself, you should know about it and do it. Don't clog up the system. Now back to a soulmate versus partner. Don't be confused. Don't try to find someone who's gonna provide you with many different and many superficial things. There's so many things that really don't matter. If I can only say to singles, all these things you're looking for, your long list, it doesn't matter. All that matters is one thing and one thing only. To find someone who you can connect with and who will end your loneliness. That's it. Everything else is superficial. If it wasn't for the fact that we're lonely, that we're deeply lonely, none of this would make sense. Marriage doesn't make sense on a superficial level. Don't bother. But the ability to have someone and to know that I'm in a committed relationship with someone and that matters, and that has brought the end to my loneliness because that person thinks that I'm the greatest thing that happened since Thaiskala. That matters. That's what really matters. Think about it this way. If someone wants to go into business, and doesn't want to take on the huge project alone. Well, they have to find a partner. And they expect their partner to match their contribution. Money, uh, toil, uh, creativity, enterprise. And so therefore, the two of them will have an equal share of the business. And the two of them will have an equal share of the burden. Now, what if one is not as articulate as the other? No problem. One partner says... I'm good at some things and you're good at other things. So I'll put 40 hours a week into sales and you'll put 40 hours a week into accounts. So what we have now is what we would call a complementary partnership. And that works out fine for business. And this is how so many of us go about dating. The first thing we do in the dating process is we determine that marriage or a long-term relationship is a business that requires two people. And since I'm only one person 
and I don't like sologamy. I need someone else. So what kind of partner should I find? Well, obviously someone who can either match or at least complement my contribution. So I put in this much, and you're going to put in the same amount, and then we're going to have a partnership. It's never going to work. It's never going to work. What you're looking for is not a partner. If you wanted a partner, you can find yourself a roommate. You can find yourself a good friend. What you're looking for is a soulmate. And a soulmate, once again, it's not existential. A soulmate is someone who will end your feeling of loneliness. Now, I know some of you say you can be in a relationship and feel lonely. Well, probably because you're in a partnership, not a relationship. A soulmate ends your loneliness. That's dating secret number three. Dating secret number four. To find the perfect soulmate, you should focus not on what you have, but what you lack. Think about it a second. Not on what you have, but what you lack. I think this is one of the biggest mistakes that people make. The way people today look for a partner or for a relationship is by sitting down, and making a list of everything that they're looking for. So I sometimes get these long, long laundry lists and I'm like, what? Like, what are you looking for? And then what ends up happening is, unless you find someone of equal or greater value, then you're settling down. Oh my gosh, I hate that term. What does that mean, settling down? What does that mean? Like, how do you know what is down and what is up? When anyone says, oh, are you ready to settle down? I don't know if I'm ready to settle down. I don't even know what down is or up is. That's too complicated. And even though this is the most common form of modern dating, I think it's a, it's, it doesn't make any sense. Dating should never begin with what we have or what we're looking for. It has to begin with what we lack. You don't go into a relationship because you have something. You go into a relationship because you're missing something. And only by identifying that one thing you're missing, for example, loneliness, you're missing another person in your life, then you're guaranteed to find someone who will fill that loneliness. So, in other words, although a partner can bring many things. They're all superficial. It's not what you're looking for. A soulmate brings one thing. And that is the most vital thing of all. It's an end to your loneliness and a feeling that you are the most special person in the entire world. And by the way, while we're on the topic, if you don't think you're special, they won't think you're special either. And isn't that really all we want? Why are we making it so complicated? Why don't we just cut away all of the nonsense and get right to the essence? I'm going to tell you this, and you're not going to agree with me. And you're going to start making excuses in your head. But listen to me without the excuses. Just say to all your excuses, step aside for a second. When you are really ready to find someone, you'll meet that person. Don't start blaming it on other people. Don't start saying you, it's your job. It's not my job. Not my job to find someone for you. I can help you. And I've been able to help a lot of people. But it's not my job. It's not anyone else's job to find someone for you but you. It's your job to go out there and find someone for yourself. And when you're ready, that person will appear. Now, they're not going to appear if you're sitting and laying in your bed with your covers over your head saying, where is this person? Why aren't they knocking on my door? Hello, I've been waiting. No, you have, to go, you have to go out there. 
Now, I want to make, when I'm talking about this loneliness, I think it's an important thing because someone mentioned this before about having platonic friends. I don't believe that it's a good thing for platonic relationships to exist. You're going to disagree with me, I know. But I don't think, I'll tell you why. Because it desensitizes us. And so we, we don't feel that loneliness when we have platonic friendships. It kind of fills that that little void within us. So that little spark that's supposed to exist, like everybody wants, like there should be the fireworks. I don't even know what that means. Sometimes I feel like when I set up a date, I just want to go secretly onto the date. And then I want to take little fireworks and put it behind the person. And all of a sudden there'll be a big, a big, big spark that'll fly up behind the person. Say, there, there's the fireworks you're looking for. But what happens is we so often fill the void. It really is a loneliness. And one of the things that COVID did to us, a little silver lining within this terrible time that we just went through, is it reminded us that we truly are lonely. Now, I want you to, to think about that for a moment, that, that experience that you had when you couldn't just go out with your friends, when you couldn't just go out and do whatever you wanted because it wasn't possible during those times when you really felt like I really want someone in my life. That is a very important feeling because you still feel like that even though you're able today to fill that void. So all these platonic friendships that you're creating, they're filling a void that's not allowing you to find that special person. Dating secret number five. Don't be afraid to talk serious. Don't be afraid. People ask me all the time, when is the right time to start talking serious? Is this a real relationship? What are we playing games for? What are we playing games for? If it's real, the time is now. I can't tell you how many couples, engaged couples, have come to meet with me and they've never had a serious conversation. I'm shocked sometimes that couples are dating for years and they've never had a serious conversation. Don't be afraid to talk about life goals, about education, about plans for the future. Part of a relationship is the ability to enjoy and share your partner's goals to be able to help them, to be able to encourage them, to be what the Torah calls, when the Torah talks about Adam and Eve, it calls her an ezer kenegdo, a help made against him. It's a funny term, a help made against him. Yes, it's someone who challenges the other and helps them grow and helps them be better. So, in order to be able to challenge the other and help them grow, you need to know about their goals. What are their future plans? Who are they? It's so great to be on the same page from the get-go. And it's so funny, you may never know what they're going to surprise you with. Dating secret number six. Look for your compliment, not your sister. You're not looking for your sister or your brother. It's not Mr. Right. It's Mr. Right for me. Men Men and women by nature are opposites. Whoever said opposites attract was trying to complicate something that's really simple. You're not trying to find your opposite. You're trying to find your complement. Very, very big difference. Opposite versus complement. The complement of your soul, otherwise known as your soulmate. We've already gone over, over what that is. Now, when you know who you are, you're going to recognize who your complement is. 
Your date may be good looking, may be attractive, but it doesn't mean they're right for you. It doesn't mean that they are your complement. So although the person you're looking for brings, or the person you're with may bring many things, the superficial things, they're not going to make the long-term relationship. The superficial things are good for the two-hour relationship. That's how long the romantic comedies are, for two hours. So if you want to have a two-hour relationship, you can just watch a romantic comedy and take advice from that. But long-term relationships, they cannot, they will not be sustained on superficial things. A soulmate brings only one thing. A soulmate brings that complementary part of themselves. Well, the soulmate brings the end to your loneliness. We've already discussed that. But the soulmate is complementary. Dating secret number seven. I'm just looking at the time. I promised you only 25 minutes. So I have five minutes left to do three secrets. So it's secret number seven. It's a relationship, not a negotiation. Don't ever settle. Don't settle. Secret number eight is tr stop trying to be your own soulmate. No one is going to ever love you as much as you love yourself. Thank God we are a generation of self-sufficient people. We used to rely on others. We used to need others. Today we have our own jobs. We have our own homes. We can afford to go on nice vacation. We don't need that anymore. Actually, I think this independence is incredible in almost every way. It's been incredible to our society in almost every way besides for one, and that's relationships. That's dating. Years ago, people looked for one big thing in a lifelong partner. Today, we look for many little things, most of them superficial. Because people who are financially independent, because they have a greater choice in their lifestyle, they need a superficial laundry list of things that they want to find in someone else. So many people today feel smug about themselves. They're rarely looking to share their lives, at least less superficially than Facebook. We don't feel any great need to search for our own soul, never mind our soulmate. And so what I say in secret number eight is don't be your own soulmate. Make space in your life for someone else. And sometimes that means clearing out one part of your closet, sleeping on one side of your bed, sitting at one chair at the table, just so you can physically feel like there's something missing in your life. If you don't feel like there's something missing in your life, then you're not going to have. And not only that, but if you look around your living space and ask yourself, is there space here for someone else? Am I taking up too much of this space right now? to the point where there's no space for someone else. I couldn't even fit someone in my space. My closet is too full. Then you have to empty out your space and physically make that space so that every single day you can see a reminder that there's something missing in your life. That's number eight. Number nine, love is not tit for tat. Don't keep track. It's not a game. It's real life. There's no need to keep track of who paid for what and who did what. We live in a pluralistic society. Today, we, we tend to share costs more than ever before. And we should learn to have the satisfaction in giving. I know so many of us want to have everything and everything and everything. You want to have what they call have your cake and eat it too. But getting the satisfaction from giving and not from taking is a beautiful thing. Because it's not about each taking, keeping track of what we're, oh, I gave yesterday, I'm giving tomorrow. If you both give 100%, the rewards are endless. Yeah, that means taking a little bit of vulnerable risk. If you don't take a, if there's no vulnerability, you're not going to get anywhere. You got to take a little risk here. You may end up Getting your heart broken, yeah, it's a risk that we take, but it's a risk worth taking. 
And number 10, I think is really the most important one is don't date to death. So many relationships end because the couple does what I call date to death. There is a natural evolution to a relationship. There's an initial courtship. There's getting to know each other. It's getting more serious. There's a proposal, an engagement, a marriage. Oops, I said the big M word. I'm sorry. And even within marriage, there is a progression of marriage. But we'll save that for when we talk about marriage. Many people are afraid of commitment. And so they string their partners along until the relationship crashes. Allow the relationship to progress naturally. There's no need to hold it back. Those are my 10 dating tips. Now I'm going to start. I'm going to change uh, the conversation a bit. And I'm going to go to the questions that you asked me before this evening and the questions that you put in the chat while I was talking. So I'm going to try to get to them all. And then we'll open it up afterwards. Oh my gosh, I got so many amazing questions. So many amazing questions. So let's get started here. Um, and obviously, if you have more questions, please, you can send them to me privately, but please. Um, okay, a lot of people uh, were asking about um, the dating sites. So you can use any of my dating sites. If you already have a profile there, you're welcome to send me uh, an email and somebody will make sure that you get a gold membership for a month for free. If you haven't, if you're making a brand new profile, just put in the marketing code, one word, rabbi's gift. It's either jmontreal.com or jtoronto.com or jmatchmaking.com. They're all the same, essentially, because in the back end, they're all the same. And we really, we have a great system that's set up right now. And we can really help you out right now in a very in, in a very real way. Uh, we've been setting up. I can just tell you, um, this Sunday, this Sunday we um, we we hit an amazing record of forty eight first dates in a single day. So just to give you an idea of the amount of dates that we're able to set up, and we and the system is really growing. We have really amazing uh, amazing news. Uh, we're in the process of translating the site to French. It's a very important for here here in Montreal. It's a very important thing, and uh, there's actually somebody here who's been helping us uh, translate the site. And so we're, but right now we're at a point where we really can handle uh, a, a lot more people, and you, you're welcome to join and to, to to send others. And even after tonight, if you met somebody here tonight, um, we're, we're we're happy to set you up officially. Uh, you can just let us know. So that's jmontreal.com is fine. It's the parent site and rabbi's gift. Okay. Um, next. Okay. I'm just going through all of these other questions. Um, if you're on another site, people are asking about other sites. The best is we can, we have much more control even though we are connected with many other sites, that's part of a way that we're able to really connect and get a lot of a lot of different uh, people. But we have a lot more control of being able to give you um, uh, uh, the service by just signing up there. Um, somebody just wrote to me, we must love ourselves before we love another. Absolutely. What is the difference between self-confidence and arrogance? So... Arrogance is an inflated version of self-confidence. Self-confidence, like I said, is just being able to wake up and say, this is what I'm needed for today. I matter. The fact that I have another day of life, I matter. It doesn't, it's not, people think self-confidence is like, oh, you know, this is, you know, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. that that's arrogance. Self-confidence is being sure of yourself, being okay, being comfortable in your own skin. That's what self-confidence is. Okay. Um, 
Should I not rely on someone else to fill a lack of respect for myself? If so, which deficits should I heal and which do my soulmate heal? I don't think you should expect your soulmate to heal any of your deficits. That's not the point of beginning into a relationship. You don't get into a relationship to heal yourself. It could be that if you have a loving partner, that there will be a healing process that will happen. But you should not go into a relationship expecting anything. You should not expect anything. You should go into a relationship to give because you have a part of yourself that is missing. There's a part of you that's missing and you want to give to that other part of yourself through another person. That's why we go into a relationship. What about, next question, what about the cloud nine feeling? Should we always have that or is it bad not to feel that anymore? How early is it not good to lose the feeling? So I'm, I think you're talking about the sparks or the fireworks, or I guess that's what you're talking about, that cloud nine feeling. I don't think it would be normal for anyone to have that today because we've desensitized ourselves so much to it. Look, I... I, I, when I dated my wife, I did have that feeling because she was the first woman that I had a relationship with. So naturally, as a young adult, there was going to be sparks flying. But we don't all have that. That's not possible anymore. And so you shouldn't expect. I'm not saying that there won't be some butterflies at times, but you shouldn't expect that feeling that 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 thing that you're waiting for. And people always, I, I get it so often after a first date, they'll come back to me, they'll say, eh, there weren't sparks. You're not gonna get sparks. Sorry. That's for the movies. You want a two hour relationship? Even, even in the movies, there's not so many sparks anymore. That's just, just not gonna happen. So again, that expectation is putting a, a damper on somebody who could be a really good partner, who someone who could be a really good soulmate, because you're waiting, you're you're wanting that spark. Okay, somebody asked me a question here. I don't understand. Um, okay, next. What do you mean by complimentary? A very good question. I could I could speak about complimentary all night. What do I mean by complimentary? I mean that there. Trying to think of a, a simple way to put it. Don't look, don't start trying to figure, you know what? Forget I even said it. Because complimentary, I see what's going to happen. You're going to start saying, oh, I'm missing this. So I have to look for, no, no. Don't, don't, that's too complicated. You're, 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 again, so often we complicate something that is so simple. You're looking for an end to your loneliness. You're looking for someone who will treat you like the greatest thing that ever happened since sliced challah. That's it. If they treat you nicely and you're, and, and they, and you're not absolutely repulsed by them, that's your soulmate. I know. I can see some of your faces. You're like, no, that's too simple. No, it's got to be more complicated than that. Yeah, we, we complicate things. That's complimentary. Complimentary is somebody else. So scratch that I even started making complications because I know that you're already complicating everything so much in your head. I don't want to add to it. My job here tonight is to simplify it. Okay. Next question. How about reconnecting with people we previously dated but still have a high opinion of and vice versa? Some people say... But if the relationship came to an end, one should not seek to rekindle it, but circumstances change and we grow and mature. What are your thoughts on this? I think it's a great idea. If you still have, I'm going to even say it even further. What If you're asking this question, it means that you still have feelings for someone and you have one of two choices, act on those feelings or drop them. 
But as long as you have feelings for that person, you're not going to be able to get into a relationship with anyone else. Because you are in a relationship with that person in your head. So that person, you may not have seen them for 10 years. Some people are in a relationship with someone in their head for years. And they're not able to move on. So my answer to this is either act on it, do something about it, see if the two of you changed, see if circumstances did change, see if you did grow and mature, try, reach out, or drop it, release them. Don't think about them anymore because they are taking up all the space that is needed for someone else that you should be getting into a real relationship with. Okay, there's some questions that people asked and I don't understand them, so I'm, I'm not saying them. Um, what did you mean by don't settle? What I meant is that so many people they say they're settling down. Oh, it's not really what I wanted, but I, you know what? I'm settling. You're never settling. Don't settle. Don't, don't think of it that way. Don't make, see, again, we, we make up these stories in our head. Why? I don't know why. Maybe we're afraid of getting hurt and we're trying to justify it. I, I don't know exactly. But I, I, I just, that is not a term or an idea that we should be using. Somebody said here a really great line, date them till you hate them, that a, that a shadchan, a matchmaker once told them, date them till you hate them. It's a very nice line, but be careful because if you start hating them, then you need to make sure very often you think that it's time for the relationship to break up. It's not a breakup. It means the relationship needs to go to the next stage. If you are dating someone and it's all good, and then all of a sudden you start having feelings. It means the relationship is going to the next, next stage. I had a, a couple that was in my office this week. They're married seven years. And this is a couple married. They're, they're married. They're married seven, seven and a half years. And he, he was saying to me in, you know, would, in, in, our, in our session that he's starting to hate his wife. And I said, I really believe, and it's not my own line, this is a line of, uh, of a very good friend of mine, Dr. Asael Romanelli, someone who I've done a lot of sessions with, and we've shared stage here quite a bit over the years. Um, he says that you will get married a number of times in your life, and the question will be, is it going to be to the same person or not? And so I, what I say to this couple is that your relationship right now is asking you to get remarried. You're at the next stage of your relationship. So sometimes when you have those feelings and you're in a relationship, it's not often we translate them as negative feelings. They're not negative feelings. It's the two of you saying it's time for the next stage of the relationship. Um, can you share some ideas of how not to, of how to love yourself? That's hard. First of all, if you're asking that question, that's a great start. How do I love myself? You're okay. You're not a bad person. You're okay. Do I have ideas on how to love yourself? Yeah, a lot of ideas, but definitely you need to talk to somebody one-on-one. -on -one. That's not a, uh, something that we can talk in the public forum. But if you don't love yourself, there are ways of, of, of dealing with that. And that's time for somebody to help you with that specific thing. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you need therapy or some people have these, you know, the stigma attached to therapy. It just means that you need to work on that particular issue of your life. And that's, it's not something you can just, you need to have somebody who knows you, who gets to know you, who can help you because every person learns to love themselves in different ways. Somebody else said marriage is not a hospital. I, I agree with that. Next question. Suffice it to say that people have to come to a relationship healed and complete so that they're ready to give. Absolutely. But if you're not healed 
and you're not complete because we're never going to be. Life is not about being perfect. It's about being better. But you don't have to bring all of that into the relationship. You can also leave some of that at the doorstep. I know that you want transparency, but you also want to be in a relationship. Next question. Is there a difference between cloud nine and lust? Are they the same? They often can be very similar. I, I like that, again, words are so powerful because I don't know, like when the person said cloud nine, I don't know exactly what they're talking about. I could, I could imagine what I would think it's like. And when you're saying lust, I don't know exactly what you're talking about. I can imagine maybe what you're referring to, but I would say that if you think that they're the same thing, then they're the same thing. Next one. I get often rejected after a first date due to what people say, no spark. What did I do wrong? It's a good question. You didn't do anything wrong. But maybe you can smile a little more. Maybe you can listen a little more. A lot of people get very nervous, and when they're nervous, they talk a lot. It's okay just to acknowledge that, let it land, and then just listen. I guarantee you, if you went on a date and she started talking, and when she was done talking, you said, tell me more. And then when she was done with that, you said, you didn't talk enough. I want to hear more. I guarantee you there'll be sparks. Because people want to feel like you're listening, like you're validating their feelings, like you're validating who they are. Probably there aren't sparks because you're going on the date and you're full of yourself and there's no space for someone else in your life. So how can the spark happen? And to the other person I say, don't expect sparks. You know how I feel about that. Next one, I believe that optical attraction is important. And if it is not there, it may never be there. Um, I, think that it, I think that optical attraction is in the eyes of the beholder. It's not always so that it's what you think it is. If the person doesn't repulse you, that's optical attraction. Because so often we have a superficial and not a valid way of looking at what we're attracted to, and attraction could grow. So I, I would have to disagree with you on that. I think that you ask yourself, am I not repulsed by the person? And then when you go on the first date or you the first meeting, at the end, you don't ask yourself, do I want to live the rest of my life with them? You ask yourself, do I want to see them again? That's all the only question you should be asking yourself after a first date. And after the second day, you ask yourself the same question. Do I want to see them again? And after the third time, do I want to see them again? Not do I want to spend the rest. We, we, we jump. We're jumping for no reason. Do I want to see them again? Eventually, the relationship will grow. And then you're going to either it'll naturally evolve or you're going to have to allow it to evolve to the next stage. But in the beginning of the relationship, you're just asking yourself, do I want to see them again? That's it. Um, what happens if you're bored? Is that superficial? Hmm. Um, boredom can be circumstantial. It could be true. It could be the person bores you. And well, if you're looking for companionship, that's a problem. But often it is superficial. It is something because it's an expectation that you have of someone else or you are bringing yourself a little too much into the conversation. And so what I say, just, just take a step back, take a step back and ask yourself, am I bored? For what reason am I bored? Maybe you're bored because you don't have any space to listen. And, and try to fake listen to the person because maybe they'll have something interesting to say. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll have nothing interesting to say. But they could still end your loneliness. So 
boredom is a relative thing. So I would say that most of the time it's superficial. Next question. What if we think we met our soulmates, but they got away and we did not see what we had? Yeah, that happens. Darn shame, but it happens. Maybe if they're still available, you can go after them. If it really matters to you and they're still around, but if they've been married and they're not available anymore, darn shame. Someone else says you need to be complete yourself, not waiting to be completed by someone else. You don't have to be complete yourself, just better, just, just okay. Okay. Um, do you have anything to say more about the relationship, not a negotiation? Don't ever settle because you didn't have time before to say anything else about it. I, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, again, and I, I, it seems to be that this, this has been asked a few times, but what I mean don't ever settle is don't, don't have that idea in your mind that you're settling. You're not settling ever. So just don't think of it that way. A, you're not trying to settle down if you're getting into a serious relationship. That's a really poor way of looking at a serious relationship. And B, if you're in a relationship with someone, you're not settling. Because what by saying the word settling, it means that you had a particular image of a person that you were going to date or marry in your mind, and this person is not it. Well, I have a great idea. If you think that you're settling by getting the person who you didn't, who, who doesn't meet up to all the things that you wanted, doesn't check all the boxes, then why don't we find the person who checks all the boxes, make a cardboard cutout of them, and then you can marry the cardboard cutout of the perfect person that you're looking for, and then you'll be happy. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, is it less than honest to date someone one does not have any feelings for? I think you have to define what feelings are. What does that mean that they, you don't have any feelings for them? So does that mean that you, they don't meet your superficial expectations of, of someone that you want to be in a relationship with? Does it mean that they repulse you physically? Does it mean that they repulse you emotionally or intellectually? If they repulse you physically, that's a problem. Because there's, if the person really repulses you, I'm not saying a picture. People judge. I mean, I don't know anyone who looks good in a picture. You know you don't look good in a picture. So why would you expect someone else looking good in a picture? So if you're judging someone by a picture, shame on you. Shame on you. Everyone is worth a conversation. Everyone. I believe that every single person that you're sent, if I send you someone, I'm not sending you a random person. They deserve a conversation. All you got to do is a FaceTime, a Zoom, a something. You don't even have to buy a coffee. It's not going to cost you a penny. It used to be it would cost you a cup of coffee. Now you can do it for free. It's called FaceTime or Zoom or something online. It's unbelievable. Everyone deserves the ability to be more than a picture. So, but if once you've had a conversation with them, even if it was a FaceTime conversation and they repulse you, that's nothing you can get back. That's that's a problem. If they don't repulse, I'm not saying that you're attracted to them. I'm just saying that they don't repulse you. But what I think is very important and something that you have to really think about is when it comes to emotional or intellectual, that's something that can grow over time. So if you don't, first dates are awkward. There's no way to unawkwardize. That's not a word, but I'm going to make it a word. There's no way to unawkwardize a first date. So you should just know you're feeling a little not yourself. The other person's feeling a little not themselves. And it's going to be awkward no matter what. So if it was awkward, which it was, and it should be, then you can try it again. 
And that emotional, that spark is not gonna come if people are nervous. So the emotional or the intellectual is something that, that can be developed. And I wouldn't just throw it out so quickly if the person doesn't repulse you. What if you feel rushed and he doesn't want to give you more than three times long distance? Um, if someone set you up, you can talk to the person who set you up. If the person didn't set you up, then tell them. Like, I, I don't understand. Why would somebody feel rushed in a relationship? That's terrible. Why would somebody... Is it really the person's rushing you? That's sad. I don't know what to say to that. Don't, don't rush people. That's not nice. Next one. I was in a relationship with an amazing woman who was not Jewish. I've since told her that we need time apart, but how can I rationalize that a Jewish partner is more important than anything else? This, my friend, is a very, very elephant in the room question. It's like become like the question. Because the reality is that we see through times of abundance, the Jewish people over the years have voted with their feet. And the intermarriage rate is very high today. I, don't, I know there's a lot of people who have a lot of really great answers for why you should marry Jewish. And I'm not saying that I condone intermarriage. But what I'm saying is that I don't think that you, I think you can control who you fall in love with. But I think that if the person is not Jewish and you're in a relationship with them and you've been in a relationship a long time, you have to ask yourself really important questions, existential questions. But at the end of the day, your life is your choices. And we, our job is to support the choices you make, not to make them for you. And so that said, falling in love is a very loose term that really doesn't mean anything. And I think that there's a lot of marriage is very difficult. I'm not, I mean, I'm very pro-marriage, so I'm not supposed to be saying this, but marriage is difficult. And there's so many factors that are difficult in it that you don't want to create other issues. So if there was a choice between common place of origin and common direction or common destination, I would choose common direction and common destination because it's about where you're going, not necessarily where you're from. But I think these are really important things that you need to talk about with one another. And not to just let them go and say, oh, we're in love and we can't control it because then you're going to be in big trouble later. And definitely these are things that, that, that come up very often. Again, I'm not here condoning intermarriage. I'm just saying that your life, your choices. And if it's something that bothers you, you have to ask yourself why. I love to give and listen, but it seems to mainly attract people who only want to take and talk. Mm. What's the best way to attract people who want to reciprocate? So you have to ask yourself why there are narcissists in the world. And sometimes people who are givers attract narcissists. And I think it's important to ask yourself, why are you attracting a narcissist? Why are you attracting someone who, who is taken from you? Or maybe you are such a giver that you don't take well. You know, when I was growing up, if you gave something to someone, there was a Yiddish saying that you said when someone, you know, when you did something for someone, they would say, oh, nishda kein farvas, which translates as nothing to think. No, no. There's a lot to think. If someone thanks you, you say you're welcome. Accept a thank you. Why are you destroying a good thank you? Don't destroy the thank you. There's a lot to think. And so maybe you have to ask yourself, if you are creating the space for the person to reciprocate. 
if you're allowing them. Part of the ability to accept, are you able? A lot of people, I can tell you myself, I have a hard time accepting, taking. If you have a person who has a hard time taking, then you have to say, you have to make sure to be a person who can take. There's a lot more to say on that, but uh, maybe I'm making a note of that because I think I want to do a class just on that because I know it's a big issue. I hear it a lot. Is the person who gave in to a negotiator who presumed them to do an act no longer valuable, do soulmates try to convince someone to do an act? No. Soulmates, you see, so often, I think I get what you're saying. We so often base relationships on circumstance. It's just a circumstantial thing, whatever it is. Don't destroy something that could potentially be good because of a circumstantial situation. Um, when you mentioned dating with purpose, at what level do you need or recommend to bring up to ask the person you're dating with the same minded marriage to speak about what they want out of this relationship? At what point? I get, I think in the beginning of the relationship, you should have one date. Shared experience is the most important. Being able to enjoy each other's company because that's most of your life. So I would say you should you should go between shared experience and serious conversation. You can do them both in the same date, but you can but you don't have to. So if the first date is a shared experience, the second date should be something serious. And then the third, the next date, you shouldn't continue having a serious conversation. You should then go back to enjoy each other's company. And then you can go back to having a serious conversation. And I would go back and forth like that. So shared experience, serious conversation. Somebody rec recommended a book here, um, Loving Oneself, Self-Compassion by uh, Christian Neff. I've never read it, but uh, it's a recommendation if anybody wants it, Loving Yourself. Thank you for the recommendation. Uh, the feeling of love, and you can't wait to see them, and can't wait to see them again. That's the cloud nine feeling. Yeah. So if that's the cloud nine feeling, you shouldn't expect that. That's not fair. You're not being fair to yourself. It's, it's, it's a romantic feeling that may or may not exist for you. A woman says, I love when men try to get to know me. Good. Um, if I'm a giver and he's not, if I'm generous and he's not, is that complimentary? No, it's not. Like I said, it could be. Um, if he's a narcissist, he's a narcissist. You know, And unfortunately, it's, it's a little too often today. And we can have a different conversation about that. But what I think is important to, to mention is that complementary is two people being able to give, and they complement each other in their giving. Complementary, I'm trying very hard not to complicate things here, because I know already things are so complicated for you in your mind. So I'm really trying to not complicate things. Somebody else says, I dislike the term lonely. Although I am good on my own, I do, I do want to share my life with someone special. I hear you. I accept that. I like to, and it's okay to use a term lonely because it's real. And a lot of people are lonely. If you're not lonely and you're okay by yourself, that's fine. You don't have to be in a relationship. That's great. So whatever you're doing, let it work. If you really want to be in a long-term relationship, then you have to be okay with the word lonely because you have to feel like there's something missing in your life. If you're filling it up with all these little things, it's a wonderful thing. It's a great thing. I'm happy for you. But that just means that either you've come to a, a situation or a time in your life where you just realized that the relationship is not as important as you thought it was, or long-term relationship is not as important as you thought it was, and that's okay. Or you've desensitized yourself to it, 
But if you want a long-term relationship, there needs to be space in your life for that long-term relationship. So if if you're if you dislike the word lonely, I understand that it's difficult. And I understand that you've been able to cope and you've built a coping mechanism, which is wonderful. But is it your ideal life? Um, okay. Um, we often want things immediately and we are fast to judge this to be due to social media and online dating or did online dating bring this aspect to light more? I think that two things have brought this aspect to light more. Um, I think that the pandemic really brought this because people used to fill their life and there was a point in time where you couldn't do that and then you really felt it. A lot of people felt it. I felt it from a lot of people. It was really, really difficult for people. So that's good. Whatever, whatever it takes in order for you to be able to live out your fullest potential, whatever that means. And sometimes it's, it's the school of hard knocks that forces you to live out your potential. How do we deal with situations where the person we are dating is being told to leave because of gossip or bad reputation? Yeah, that's a... That's a hard one. That's a very hard one. Um, a lot of people, a lot of very good relationships end because of other people. I see that a lot. And I always say, I say to newly engaged couples that one of them, I have a whole list of tips that I give newly engaged couples. And one of them is, it's the two of you against the world. Don't let anyone else to, to meddle into your relationship. You have to build that trust. You have to build that relationship. So, and I see it so often. It's, it's probably one of the main reasons that, that long-term relationships end is because of other people. So be careful who you let in. What if her family doesn't like you? Is that a deal breaker? Um, it is if she's attached to her family at the hip. If she is one, I mean, if, if she's somewhat estranged from her family, it may not be. But if she's very attached to her family and her family, it, it, it sometimes it's not that the family hates you. It's actually that the family doesn't want to let her go. And they see you. And so they will do anything to stop this because they really just are so attached to her and they need her or they need him and they won't let her go or him go. And that's what's happening, really. It's really because they, they, they see you as coming in and messing up or disturbing what they have, which they think is a really good thing, but probably not good for the person that you're in the relationship with. What if you don't feel physically attractive? It's a good question. I think that there's somebody for everybody. Someone will be attracted to you, even if you don't feel physically attractive. There's somebody out there who will think that you're attractive. And so look at the world through their eyes for a moment. What if you met someone, but you thought rightly or wrongly that it wasn't the right time for you to consider them and you've never seen them again? Would God engineer the two of you bump into each other if you were soulmates? <laughs> or does it mean that they weren't your soulmate? Or does it mean that you've lost your soulmate because they thought that you weren't interested in them? So they decided that they didn't want to bump into you again and God adhered to their wish not to see you, but it's not your wish to consider them. But when you're ready or you weren't taken by surprise, great question. I love the way you put it. Um, I think that we are the result of our own choices. So it's all possible. All of those options are possible. But if it's meant to be, it may happen again. If it's meant to be, you may take that initiative and make it happen. 
which means you have the ability to make the choice instead of expecting that God, it's a lot of pressure that you're putting on God. I mean, it's fine. I mean, God's shoulders is big enough to handle it, but it's still a lot of pressure. Okay. Yes, somebody else put in another great book, and that's a book I do recommend, The Five Love Languages. It's a great book. Um, you can also just get a summary of it. Just put in five love languages online. You'll get a lot of it, but it's really good. If you have a partner, it's very important because so often we date. The premise of the book is that so often we love another the way we want to be loved instead of the way they want to be loved. And it's so important to learn the way they want to be loved. So that's a great book. Great um, suggestion. Is it possible that there is a decree that you don't get your soulmate and God thinks that you're just not marriage material? No, that's not possible. Sorry. The same God that has all the shoulders that I was talking about before doesn't think that you don't belong having a soulmate. That's that's your own degree. That's your own doing. And that's okay because we have free choice. And, and I believe free choice is real. And, and you make your own choices and you'll live by those choices that you make. Or the choices you don't make, you, you'll live by. What about, and this person's asking about serious situations, victims of serious um, situations, how do they make space to give without fear of abandonment? It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot. It's very difficult. It's not easy. Um, a lot of therapy support. It's very, very important. Yeah. I hear you on that. That's, uh, I'm sorry about that. It's very important. Um, what about second marriages and dating later in life? I've done so I've done a bunch of different sessions on that, and I have a whole set of tips on on second marriages and dating later in life. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get to that right now, but that's a really good question. Um, I'm looking for converts. Is that the right thing to do? There's nothing wrong with converts. The Torah says three times keep the Shabbat and twenty six times to accept the convert. So think about how much the Torah thinks about converts. And that's a very beautiful thing. So I'm a big fan. Um, can we mess up in a relationship if it's really our soulmate? Uh, yes, you can. Because you have free choice. And I, and I believe that free choice is real. So you can mess up a real a relationship. And that's a choice that you make. And that's okay. But you can try again. And if it's not that person, you'll, you'll have another opportunity with a person who really is your soulmate. So yes. How do you deal with people commenting, why are you still single? I think you're weird if you're still single. Um, I don't listen to them because that's none of their business and not their business to comment. And I'm sorry that they're even commenting that. I mean, I'm not sorry for them. I'm sorry that you even gave it a moment thought. That's a very foolish thing to say to somebody. And you're not weird. Just haven't found the person yet. And Sometimes it's about creating that space and about being there for that person. So a bunch of other questions here that I didn't get to. Um, okay. Um, how do you know if cultural differences matter in dating? If someone learned in a yeshiva for several years in Israel, or the other party is more college educated or not used to as to the right of a background, but follows um, um, halacha totally, but is used to working in a modern world too. If the guy is Hasidic and lives in the area of Borough Park, or the girl lives in a more modern area and fully keeps halacha, can you date if you see culture, um, if the culture will work or is a waste of time? So sometimes, sometimes you can date someone from a different culture and sometimes not. It really depends it really, really depends on which community you're from and how important that particular thing is for you and how much you're willing to let go of and how much you're stuck on. Remember, for every single non-negotiable you have, you have to negotiate a lot of other things. So if your negotiation is cultural, then if, you, if your non-negotiation is cultural, then you have to negotiate a lot of other things. You can't. 
be stubborn and want everything. Like, for example, someone asked this question just now, you know, secular and religious. Well, for a religious person, being religious is a non-negotiable. Well, then there's a lot of other things they're going to have to negotiate. So, yes, I think it's very hard. I, I'm not saying it's impossible. I've seen it work. But I think it's very, very hard. I have so many other questions coming in here and questions that I didn't get to. I'm so sorry. I want to honor the time that we have here today. And I know there's so many of you that we didn't even have a chance to let you unmute. But uh, we're coming to uh, an end. And we'll do this again. We'll, we'll, we'll start doing this more often. Um, you're welcome to email me. If you got, you got an, you all got an email from me. So you're welcome to email me. And um, I would love to know before we finish tonight, um, if you can write in the, in the, in the, in the chat box, what is a nugget that you're taking out of tonight? And I thank you all for your very nice, uh, thoughtful uh, comments, but I would, I'd, Better than a thoughtful comment, better than the applause, and 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 the questions that you asked tonight were amazing. I would love to know if you can just take a moment and write in the comment box what is one nugget that you're taking home with you tonight. That would make me very happy. And some of you are saying too many. I want to hear one. Just one. You should try to make space for someone and think about how I can be more of a giver. I love that. Fantastic. To date with purpose, someone said. Okay. Dating with purpose. Clear, clear all the clutter. Um, somebody says, I take away that the two should be matched in giving to each other, not just the giver or the taker, but Give and give. Okay. Someone else says, I took away the power to be more confident and learn from my past mistakes and learn to grow. Good. My nugget is looking in the mirror is more useful than looking for others' perfections or lack thereof. Yes. Making space for someone in your life. Love that. Um, the difference between a soulmate and a partner and how that focus is dating. Yes. Great. Definitely taking away is not to force it and let it come and develop and, and speed and speed it will develop, okay? Um, dating with a purpose to be more confident, yes, to love yourself, um, that, we're the, that we're the result of our decisions. I love that, thank you. Really, really appreciate that. Any other takeaways tonight? With that, um, I'm going to wish you a wonderful evening. Oh, someone else says, uh, a soulmate is who I am seeking and not be ashamed of feeling lonely. Yes, someone is out there. I realize that now is not the time to make space for a relationship, but maybe in the future, it will be a better time to make space. Right now, I'm pursuing other personal and professional goals. Yes, fantastic. That's great. Just that realization alone is amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing. And if you have any ideas for future uh, uh, future conversations, yes, I, I'm really looking. Um, we're gonna get back into the space, and we're gonna have more conversation about other things. Somebody, people are making suggestions about other conversations. We're gonna do this. And one of the things I also uh, I'm thinking of some other interesting creative date dating uh, things. Maybe coming on and doing uh, some kind of like uh, interesting uh, uh, interviews. With, with 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 different people, you know, so people can get to know you uh, if, if you're confident enough or, or if you want to fake being confident. Um, okay, well, I really appreciate and I hope that some of you were able to meet each other tonight. There were so many of you here tonight and uh, please reach out to me. You can email me. Like I said, you all got an email from me, so you can email me and uh, and please take those nuggets and don't be afraid. Don't be scared. There's there's so much opportunity and there is there's a magic going on now. And I can see it. I've I see with the people, there's so many people that, that there's an authenticity right now that's in the world. And 
And I want you to capture that authenticity. People are ready and I know you're ready. And so I'm happy to help you in any way that I can. If you don't have a profile, make sure to make a profile. And uh, with that, I will wish you all a wonderful night to be continued.